you're probably all wondering now, what do I even mean by 2D versus 3D versus 4D prototyping? Um, so I wanted to walk through that a little bit just to kind of explain, you know, what I mean by that and why why I'm such a big fan of, of 2D prototyping, which is a lot of what I'm, I'm getting at in this lecture. So by 2D prototyping, I really just mean lower resolution prototyping. So a lot of this stuff really ends up in, you know, quote unquote 3D, 2.5D, whatever you want to call it. Um, but in general, what I'm really trying to, to show everyone here is the benefits of low resolution prototyping uh, in terms of time, in terms of cost, um, but also really just in terms of what you're going to learn from it. Um, so this one's a fun example. It's, you know, prototypes of a keyboard. Um, and what I like about these foam core prototypes is, you know, you can hand this to a user uh, without even knowing kind of what the end product is going to be, you know, what the color is, what the application, uh, and just get raw feedbacks, you know, in this case about ergonomics. Does this even fit in your hand? Is this the right shape? Um, really bulk stuff. So, you know, this is something I've seen when I was at startups and then advising startups at Highway 1. Uh, is sometimes people just don't take advantage of these early methods, um, and all of a sudden the more complicated prototypes are not as, as easy to learn from. Um, to kind of step further, you know, 3D prototyping is more traditional, so this is kind of a an interesting one. This is just a, you know, five-axis crazy CNC mill um, to make an impeller. So, you know, 3D prototyping is kind of the more traditional. Uh, like Paul said, a lot of the, you know, equations in 3D prototyping have been changing recently uh, with the, you know, increase in availability and, and lower cost of 3D printing um, in the early stages of additive manufacturing. So, in general, this is traditionally what's been around more. Um, so people jump to it pretty early. Um, but I'm going to show you guys later how it can actually help to kind of keep your mind in 2D, uh, show lower resolution prototypes to users, and, and get that feedback. Um, and by 4D prototyping, I, I'm really talking about videos in general. Um, and, and a lot of what, what I see there uh, is obviously been emphasized by the recent increase in crowdfunding. Um, so the picture here is one of our Highway 1 startups, um, Podo. They raised 430000 on Kickstarter. Uh, and I think that that's, you know, 4D prototyping is interesting because it adds a lot to the experience. Uh, you can ship someone a 3D prototype in the mail. You can have a meeting and show it to them in person. Um, but without kind of adding in dimension to that, explaining what the prototype means, um, not only explaining what it is, how it was prototyped, but really how does this change the experience? What's what's the context here? Um, what, what can I really learn from a video? Uh, or the other example would be an experiential prototype. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, hey, if, you know, your client wants a hospital waiting room and not, you know, a new defibrillator, um, you probably need to prototype a whole hospital waiting room and actually walk them through the experience to get that. So video and experiential prototypes are what I'm talking about um, with 4D. So to come back quickly to the Poto example, what I loved about that is um, the Poto product is basically a stick anywhere camera. Um, so it's one of those things that's pretty easy to explain. Um, but I think they did a great job in their Kickstarter video of explaining not only, hey, what's my 3D product, this camera I can stick anywhere, um, not only what I, what do I do with it, you know, what, mainly they're targeting the selfie market, um, but also just how does that change the whole experience? If I had this for a day of my life, how would that be different? You know, how would I be taking pictures of my friends differently? Is it just faster? Is it better? Is it cheaper? Um, so that's really the benefit I see of 4D prototyping. Um, and part of why I'm emphasizing that a bit is you really only get one shot at this. Um, so you can make lots and lots of 2D prototypes. They're cheap. They're easy. You can throw them away. Uh, I encourage teams to keep them because they'll end up in your museum someday when you're as big as Google. Um, but in general, you know, 4D prototype is typically a Kickstarter video or other crowdfunding video that launches you to the world. Um, so you only get to do that once. Um, so knowing that, I encourage teams to spend a lot more time in the 2D world. So to kind of flush that out a bit, you know, like I said, 2D, you can take a little bit more, you know, end up in three dimensions a little bit, but really what I'm talking about is low resolution prototyping, stuff you can do quickly. You know, once I have it on the whiteboard, which I would still argue is a 2D prototype, how do I put that into phone core, into cardboard, uh, into something I can laser cut into a physical form where I can start to show it to users, start to validate simplified mechanisms, uh, and also start to learn a bit about materials and things like that. Um, and 3D prototyping is, you know, more traditional, like I said, um, and I think people jump to that pretty quickly these days, especially with the advent of 3D printers. Uh, and they're great tools, but I would say that, you know, 3D printer can take a day, which is, you know, much faster than it used to take two weeks to outsource a CNC part. Um, but even a day is longer than the hour that you could cut something out of foam core or laser cut and learn in 2D. Uh, and then, of course, like I said, 4D prototyping is really using a whole video uh, to show the experience. 
And I emphasize crowdfunding, but this could also be a launch video. This could be something on your website. This could be something you should send to VCs or investors to walk them through a whole experience um, if, you know, you don't have the opportunity to, to show them in person. So just to flush out 2D, 3D, 4D a little bit more.